Rings of Power Season 2, Episode 2. We open on Mordor with a very dramatic Venom style creep across the land. Epic and foreboding music as we zoom in on Kaza Doom. Oh, look, they use mirrors to reflect light onto their indoor garden. That's neat. And we pan down, down, down to the market? Rings of Power really is the best at a bait and switch, I gotta say. Durin and Disa are learning how to shop on food stamps, but Disa opted into the early warning system, so she's the only one that notices that they're about to have an earthquake, and then they have the earthquake. Luckily, despite all the drama, it doesn't seem to have caused much damage, but then, oh no, there are little window holes all close up. And even though there were definitely like lanterns and fires around, those seem to not be shedding any light anymore, so they're in like full darkness now. Dun, dun. Done. Meanwhile, Gal has decided to show off her new bling to her brother, albeit her dead brother. They seem to be carving these statues into living trees, which is cool and all, but like, isn't the tree gonna keep growing and then like kind of distort the statue? I feel like brother's gonna look real weird in a few years, but I digress. Calabella Brimbor is here. I'm sorry, I started calling him that last season and I can't stop and you're just gonna have to deal with it. But uh-oh, Vecna is here. And he's taking them to the upside down. Kelly Belly's in danger and Gal is all, oh no, oh help. Kelly Belly has had a look at the script as well. And he's memorized that bit about the rings. Three rings for the elven kings under the sky. Seven for the dwarf lords in their halls of stone. Nine for mortal men doomed to die. Guys, I'm starting to think these rings might be bad news. Oh, just kidding, that was a dream. Phew! Gal wakes up just in time to offer a valuable contribution to the War Council. Sending ships on a river to attack them? Genius move. They'll never see it coming. With a plan like that, no need for further discussion. Off you pop to make it so. Gal decides to share with Papa Elf that Sauron wants to rule all of Middle-earth through mind control. But unlike Vecna, who's just built like that, he's gonna need rings. Rings are the only way that he can do that. Girl, you were like the biggest cheerleader for these rings. Now you're getting cold feet? What gives? Even though Sauron is the one that taught Kelly Belly how to make the rings, according to Galadriel, he cannot make more on his own. Citation needed? Oh, time for a location change. Gal and Papa Elf head over to watch like three dudes training in the forest. She is not letting this go. The ring is making me see the unseen world. Ah, you think the ring is making you see the future. Got it. Wait, what? No, that's not what- How about you? Yeah, samesies. Well, let's go after him then. No way, you are putting in his hands. That is why I alone can slay him. Yeah, still no. Meanwhile, in a region. Hey man, sorry, Kelly Belly can't let you in. No biggie, I'll just hang out here till he changes his mind. You see, Sauron is super tricksy, and so he extremely cleverly turns a little bit so that she'll be able to see his injury, which, being a lady, she will instantly pivot to caretaker healer mode and beg Kelly Belly to let him in. Sauron really is just the most cunning. He won't leave. Oh, he'll leave eventually. Promised Gal I wouldn't talk to him. But... Is there something else? He's... injured. Oh, not our problem. Wow, mad respect for Kelly Belly for not falling for it. News should arrive from Linden any day now. Or will it? We cut to the forest where there's a bunch of dead elves and... Oh no! The news! We cut to a lone rider carrying a flag. He's like really committed to carrying this flag. There is no one around, no one even in sight. He's got one hand on the flag and one on the reins. And we cut to a different rider, question mark? This one at least is uh, less committed to the whole flag carrying thing. He's just stuck it in the saddle, which I must say does seem to be much more practical. And we have arrived at, oh, it's the pop stars clan. These folks are like super into moths. They just fly around all over just everywhere. And after watching the moths fly around for a long time, they kind of uh, swish and swirl around and the pop star is back. Give me the debrief. What's happening? Somehow, Sauron returned. Then that other sand person is like, I've got better news. I found the wizard and I left him to come back here so I could tell you about it before then going back there in order to capture slash defeat him. What makes you so confident you can overpower him? Don't worry, Mr. B. I have a cunning plan to solve the problem. If he doesn't do what I say, I'll just kill the Not Hobbits. <laughs> Speaking of the Not Hobbits, they are currently working on giving Great Value Gandalf a name. How about Doderick? But it turns out names are like a mystical thing. You can't just like give somebody a name. Everyone has a true name and it's like cosmically yours. And then when you hear it, your heart 
will glow. Ah, gotcha. Well, not to worry. You'll hear yours one day. Good news. I found a shortcut. Great value Gandalf gets real sassy about that shortcut, about not wanting to die in a desert. How about Dodderick? You see, she already said that name, so it's funny. Huh? Anyway, the not-hobbits want to know why Great Value Gandalf can't just, like, magic up some food and water for them. But he's saved from answering that by the sound of hooves. The sand people are back. Boy, they travel fast. So you remember how last season we did, like, the hobbits under the tree roots hiding from danger homage? Well, now we're going to do Sam and Frodo outside the Black Gate under hiding underneath an elven cloak. Except... Instead of Sam and Frodo, it's two insignificant Harfoots. And um, instead of the Black Gate, it's just the middle of nowhere. And instead of an elven cloak, it's just a random raggedy piece of cloth. Tote same. They're watching our trail. We better find another path. Noir reminds him that they do actually have another path, but he was kind of mean about it. But I guess they're gonna have to go that way. Nobody goes off trail. Nobody walks alone. I almost forgot about them saying that nonsense. Thank you so much for reminding me. Meanwhile, in Casa Doom, the dwarf ladies are gossiping. All the gardens are withering since the earthquakes closed up all the sun holes. Where there's rumors that other mines have had these problems. Don't know how those rumors traveled so fast, but... They are also gossiping that it's all Durin's fault for letting an elf in. Dee says quick to nip that in the bud. So it's not true that something bad is going on? We're about to prove it's not. See, we had a similar situation. Our mine was also by a volcano, and the exact same thing happened. Earthquakes started that made the windows close, which made the crops die. That's just how things go. Solution, make new windows. Um, your stone dudes can't find any safe places to make them in this whole mountain. Touche. So let us ladies give it a go. And they sing and new holes just appear. But then they close and even more stuff breaks. Swamp womp. This has never, ever, ever, ever happened before. We've always been able to sing open new holes. No, it's dark times. Now the king wants to know from Disa what's going on with his son because like they're still fighting. Well, if you want to apologize, how about you apologize to your son? Well, why should I apologize? It's his fault. He's the stubborn one. He gets it from you. Oh, actually it's strength. But it does take strength to hold a grudge like that. Yep, sure does. No wonder we can't hear the mountain anymore when the king is deaf to his own son's sorrow. So are we saying that the sun hole problem is caused by the king and his son fighting? Is that how that works? Meanwhile, Durin is finally having to do a hard day's work, but he's getting bullied by the other miners. But not to worry, he and his wifey still live in basically a palace. Kids won't eat though, cause you know, times are hard and the food is gross now. Why not get crops from the surface? Great idea, why don't you go tell your dad that? I feel like this whole holes in the rock amplified by mirrors system would not be sufficient to provide light to crops that are being grown in sheer rock to feed like an entire mine, but well, what do I know? Anyway, Duran will not talk to his dad about this. If he hadn't thrown Elrond out, we'd have plenty of food. Okay, so the sun hole problem is not caused by the father and son bickering, but it's caused by the dad throwing out the elf? I'm sure glad they understand how stone works because these connections are way beyond me. Meanwhile, in Linden, just like his pal Duran, Elrond is now also having to do hard labor. Gals come to tell him that their messages to Kelly Belly have gone unanswered. So therefore, Sauron is there. And she and a group of companions are gonna head out yonder to check it out. You wanna come? I'm just a politician. Yeah, but dad trusts you. Does he though? Anyway, Elrond is still not down to go. Listen, okay, dad won't let me go by myself. I can only go if you come too. Oh ho ho, and why is that? He doesn't trust me to be alone with my ex. So, you love breaking the rules. <sighs> dad is right. Sauron tricked me and he'll probably trick me again. Tricked you? Girl, he played you like a fiddle. He's playing all y'all. Okay, fine, yes, that's why we need you. Nah, this is not my problem. Y'all wanna wear the rings? You can deal with it. Please? I can't fall for him again. Emotional flashback of her sitting next to Halbrand. Just, just sitting, doing nothing, saying nothing. Very, very emotional. Why is it that we're sending her again? You don't send a drug addict to take down a dealer. I'm just saying. Girl, you are still down bad. No way I'm getting involved. But you promised to help me. Yeah, still no. We cut to Elrond, who's gonna go have a chat with Grandpa Elf, who is shaving, question mark? Do you not want to live in beauty? Yeah, that doesn't sound like a shady sales pitch. Uh, and then Grandpa explains death of the author theory, but Elrond's not buying it. So Grandpa pivots to, with great power comes great responsibility. And this is more effective with Elrond. 
Meanwhile, Great Value Gandalf and the Not Hobbits are trekking across Arrakis. Well, he is trekking. The Not Hobbits are getting dragged. But this proves to be too much for Great Value Gandalf, and he passes out, so they swap. And then Samantha Wise spots a well, dead ass in the middle of nowhere, which seems sus to me, but oh, and would you look at that? It is a trap. The Sand People are back. So they found water, they built a well, and then rigged it so that it would ring a bell anytime like a weary, thirsty traveler came by so that they could kill them. But not to worry, Great Value Gandalf has found a stick. This gives him the courage to do magic again. But he kind of overdoes it and creates this massive storm, which I'm really not seeing how this is an improvement on their situation. Oh no, the stick is breaking! The well is breaking! And the Not Hobbits got sucked into the twister! I guess that's a wrap on the Not Hobbits, R.I.P. Meanwhile, in Erechion, Kelly Belly is hard at work inventing invisible ink. He's uh, used the last bit of mithril that he's got on this little art project. Kelly Belly is getting worried about his old pal, and the Lady Elf is immediately ready to pivot to caretaker mode. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Oh wow, Elvish Umbrella, super cool. So Kelly Belly comes out to tell his old pal to move along. He's not allowed to talk to him. I feel like the elves would have guards or whatever who could like take care of this, you know, kick someone out, prevent someone from entering, whatever. But if not, then I guess taking over Middle Earth is gonna be a lot easier than I thought. Anyway, Sauron, the master manipulator. She said you'd say that. Who, Galpal? Yep. You've spoken with her? Technically, I can truthfully answer yes to that question. Thank you for phrasing it that way. What's going on? What's the news? Oh, they haven't been keeping you in the loop? Well, this is awkward. You see, Sauron cleverly intercepted those messages so that Kelly Belly would get butt hurt and therefore immediately trust Sauron. It is a perfect plan, really. Ain't that just the way? You work, 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 and they take, 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 and now he decides to leave. I know when I'm not wanted. It just takes you about a day to work it out. Wait, tell me, did the rings work? You mean, did they stop the tree plague that was also affecting all of elf kind? Wouldn't you, like, I don't know, notice a sudden drastic shift like that? Oh, baby, did they ever. <laughs> you have no idea how amazing it feels after all these centuries to finally create something. Wait, he's never made anything before? I thought he was like the master smith. Are you my friend? Of course. Okay, bestie then. I gotta come clean with you. You got it, friend, whatever it is, I can take it. Cool, yeah, so, um, can you make some more rings for men? Whoa, partner, that's crazy talk. Even if I was gonna consider that, there's no way dwarves are even gonna provide the supply. Oh, uh, they've got bigger problems. Who are you? I mean, Gal cast me out when she found out who I really am. Well, that doesn't bode well. Well, I'm not a king. I'm not from the Southlands. I mean, your accent gave that away a long time ago. I'm not even mortal. Uh, what? I'm a messenger from, um, some vague, powerful, probably goodness. I'm here to talk people wise enough to listen. Well, I'm listening. Dark times are coming and the rings are the only hope. Are you for real? You expect me to believe you are? Storm dramatically blasts window open. And, uh, Sauron is gone? Everything's in darkness? The lights go out? The fire goes out? Big fire. And then Phantom of the Opera voice telling Kelly Belly he's super special. And then Sauron emerges from the flames. I knew it, he's a secret Targaryen. Meanwhile in Linden, Gal's getting her mission orders. That uh, great power speech really worked on Elrond. So glad you decided to join me. No, no, he's not joining. Big brother is leading. Huh. And back at Casa Doom, the dwarves have just received a new supply order from Eregion. So uh, we've new insights into dwarf agriculture, which really leaves me with more questions than answers. And um, Kelly Belly is pretty dumb. And Elrond seems like the only one who kind of knows what's up. And yeah, yeah, that's what we learned. Looking forward to the next episode where we will learn so much more.